Welcome back into a new video. In today's video, we're going to go over, as you can see here, we have a page, web page, and we'll explain something called insecure deserialization. So basically, I want to understand first what is serialization and deserialization. So basically, let me get the schema here. So as you can see here, a simple example will be from TryHackMe. So we have string password one two three and as you can see we have binaries on the way and on database we also have password one two three so what does that mean what is serialization and deserialization in this case so basically we have the string password as you can see while it is being transmitted right to the database it is being transmitted and processed it is converted from a string form into uh, as you can see here binary form as all this explains. So basically here, the conversion of the password one, two, three, or the string form into more simpler forms, right, uh, is called serialization, right? So serialization is all about converting something into more simpler form or simpler blocks, right? So now from binary to password one, two, three is the process called deserialization. So this realization, we take the simpler form and we convert it back to its original form or the complex form. Okay, so what is deserialization? Insecure deserialization. Let's illustrate that in the example below. So I have the web page here. How can we know that this website has insecure deserialization? And by the way, insecure deserialization allows for multiple uh, attack vectors, you know. For example, if a website is vulnerable to insecure deserialization, it means that it can be susceptible to denial of service, it can be susceptible to remote code execution, and etc. It all depends on the skills of the attacker and the current condition of the website. So basically, to illustrate that, we're going to register in this website. We're going to click on Login uh, Account. So, a username would be my name, the password, whatever you like. Okay, so now I am that I am logged in. As you can see, my info are displayed here on the right. Okay, now if I right click on my mouse, click on inspect, we go to storage, sources. I'm looking for storage, cookies. OK, so basically, here we can see the cookies. All right, so as you can see here, we have, OK, we have the name and the value. Now, the cookie is right here, the session ID and the cookie. As you can see, the user type is user. Now, this cookie now is in its original form, right? So when I convert this cookie back, or when the, when the cookie is set by the uh, application, it is first set and encoded as page 64. So this is the encoded form. So we have the original cookie encoded into page 64. So now this is the serialization, right? This is in serialized form. So if I want to see if this quick can be deserialized, I want to convert it back to its original form, meaning that I want to take this and do page 64 decode, right? So I can take that, click on copy, go back to command line. So let's deserialize this cookie. Uh, pipe base 64 d So as you can see, the cookie now, we have converted the cookie back to its original form. And as you can see, there is a flag. So what we have done here, we have deserialized the cookie, right, back into its complex form. This is the complex form, right? Now, when the cookie is set by the application, right, first it is set like that. And then it is converted into base64 
which is called the serialization of the cookie. So that's how it works in this example, the serialization and deserialization of the cookie. So if I get back to the example here, it asks for the flag. So let's get the flag. <laughs> the flag was right here. Now on to the second flag. So as you can see, the second flag admin dashboard. So the admin dashboard here, how do we get there? All right, so now we got the cookie. That's understandable. As you can see, we have user type. If we change this to admin, and given the fact that the application doesn't do any checks and validation on the user input, we should be able to have admin access now. As you can see right now, when we refresh the page, we had admin access to the web application. Admin dashboard support tickets now. Let's look for the flag. Take this. So far, so good. Everything is simple. Now, we get to the code execution for part. So here we're given the source code of the application. As you can see, right from this line all the way here, the cookie is set in the My Profile page, right? When the user visits the My Profile page, the cookie is set. And here in this line, the cookie is encoded as base64, encode payload. That's how we get this form I showed before. So if you go back to sources, console, performance, one more. Okay, so here, as you can see, this is the cookie. This is how it's set. This is the serialization. Now, this deserialization is when we want to convert this back to its original form. So if you go back to the app, we see here the line cookie equal pickle that loads base64 P64 decode the cookie. So basically here where the deserialization happens, and that's totally fine. Serialization and deserialization are essentially um, processes that need to be done, right? To serve and to serve, transmit and process data. But basically the, 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 what's wrong here? The wrong here, as you can see here, the cookie is set in base64 stored in cookie. Hmm? Now, insecure deserialization happens, as you can see, when this cookie here, as you can see, is retrieved back to its uh, original form without validation. There is no validation here. The cookie is set by 64 right after that, set back to base 64 with no, no validation. And this is the vulnerability in the pickle, uh, uh, Python pickle. So, how to exploit that to find the flag? Flag to txt. Okay. So now what we're gonna do here? There's an exploit for that. We will put this in the description of the video. And of course, it is in the challenge as well. So this exploit, as you can see, try hack me was insecure deserialization remote code execution proof of concept. So this works on Python Pickle. If the application doesn't use Python Pickle, it's not going to work. So as you can see, Python uh, deserialization, it doesn't have to exist as only insecure deserialization. There has to be something else. So if you take this, get back, and here's sudo nano rce ui. Paste that. Of course, we gotta change the IP. So we copy that. Save this. So if we execute the Python now, sudo Python 3. As you can see, we get value 
as you can see, page 64. So let's get back to the expo and see why this happened. So import pickle says page 64. This is the command that gives us a reversal. So what's going to happen here? Class, we define a class RCE, and here we import the system and return all system command. Right? So we execute the reversal. Then print page 64 in code pickle dumps RCE. So we see here we use pickle right to encode the command here, the RCE right as the class RCE and print it on print it to the output. So if we take this, why it is being converted to base 64? Why don't we go back and just uh, where is the why don't you just replace this cookie right with the reversal? Is it supposed to work? No, it's not supposed to work. Why? Because there's serialization and deserialization that is being uh, done by the web application. So basically here, the application understands the cookie value as base64. So that's why we have to take the base64 the base64 form. So we take this and we set our listener for five for four four. We go back and we replace that with the value. Now what's going to happen? The application, as I said earlier, after the cookie is set to page 64, if we get back here, you see the cookie is set to page 64. Once it's decoded back, right, now the value of this cookie here, it is this one. Okay. Now the application will take this one and let me get back i'm trying to be clear as much as i can and here it takes it as it is and decode it back in the serialization form that is insecure deserialization there is no validation before we uh, feed the value of the cookie here to the base 64 and then to python pickle that is the uh, what we were talking about so now we gotta have to refresh the page i'm a bit lost between the tabs so i am here Okay, refresh. I don't know why we're encountering this quiz. So the quiz works, PM feedback. Okay, so basically, the vulnerability, like we spoke earlier, and when we try to get the reversal, the vulnerability actually lies here. So when we click on inspect element, we see if we have a form. Right, and the vulnerable code we have shown before it is uh, okay, it is related to this form. So, basically, if we try to change the cookie that we have just created while we are on this page, so we take um, we need to trick to create the page 64 one more time. So, we take this, and this is the value of the cookie encoded, and we replace it back in the encoded field. Okay, when I refresh now, of course, I'm going to set up my listener. As you can see, we get the reversal. So basically, that's what happened. So if I click type on ID, ID my PWD. So all we have to do now is to find the flag. Well, the thing is, what made this work actually is this vulnerable form. This vulnerable form uses Python pickle, a vulnerable Python pickle that doesn't um, validate for the cookie we provide. So I provided the cookie here, and as I explained earlier, it was or it has been directly decoded into base64 and executed the reversal without any validation. No, they didn't bother to validate what I did here. So that is insecure deserialization. So how about we get the flag and we answer the question, complete our work, ls. See if we have flag here. Let's see the back, ls. So the flag is here. I will submit, and that was correct.
You can read through all of the info here. It is very useful, very practical uh, to read about insecure deserialization. This is the basic use of insecure deserialization. If you provide the server, okay, you understand how the values or the objects being um, serialized and deserialized, how they work, how the inner workings happen in the app, and then you provide the value. For example, in that case, it was the cookie to be deserialized without any validation. That's insecure deserialization. It was an example of it. All right. Thanks for watching.